Hello and welcome back to God's One Chosen Channel. I am Apostle and I'm coming to you today on this Thanksgiving Day, a great day I believe for the body of Christ and everyone in general just to give thanks, just to stop and just look around and be thankful for what the Lord has done for us. Uh, what we'll be doing today is we'll be getting some scriptural backing on Thanksgiving. I think this is appropriate for this day. Um, the scriptures we'll be reading from will actually be Psalms 95. And uh, we'll start around verse 6, and we'll go as far as the Holy Spirit lets us. Then we'll go over to Psalms 100. And the thing about Psalms 100, we'll read the whole chapter in that, because it's kind of like a short chapter, but it's very good on Thanksgiving. I'll give you a minute to get those. Uh, once again, that will be Psalms 95. Verse 6 is where we'll start, and we'll go until the Holy Spirit sees fit to stop us. Then we'll go to Psalms 100, and we'll close out on Thanksgiving, and then we just want to expound on some things with scriptural backing about Thanksgiving and what God says we should do. Um, I know the history of Thanksgiving, um, the pilgrims and the Indians and the maize and the corn and things like that, but actually we should really be thankful to God above all things because he has provided us with everything that we have. I mean, uh, personally in my life, I know my wife and I were discussing getting a new vehicle. Uh, we actually have two vehicles, and they're both running. It's just that it's time to, like, upgrade. You know, we come up in a society where every two or three years it's time to get something a little better to kind of uh, put a stamp on your achievement or your status in life. And um, God dealt with me with that, and uh, I shared it with my wife, and I began to say, you know, we have two cars in the garage. They're both running. Uh, we don't need a new car. We want a new car, but uh, we should be thankful for what we have. So I thank God for giving me that insight and that discernment to understand that. Um, I think we have uh, to be careful not to get caught up in not being satisfied with what God has done for us. Oh, it's nothing wrong to aim high and want nice things and achieve great things, but I think we have to look around and see what God has actually done for us. And that is the main uh, reason I think Thanksgiving is. I don't think it really has anything to do with pilgrims or anything. I think we should always be thanking God. But on a day like this where everybody's set aside, I think it's only fair that we uh, thank God. Uh, you should have had time to get the scripture that was Psalms 95, verse 6, and Psalms 100. We'll start with uh, the Psalm 95, verse 6. And the word of God reads, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as you did at Meribah, as you did, say, at Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me. Though they had seen what I did, for 40 years I was angry with this generation. I said, they are people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declare on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Now, the same God, what he's saying is, uh, he said, the people back in that time, they were, uh, God had delivered them and God had shown favor to them. This is actually the people of Israel. and They still weren't thankful. They still were complaining about their condition. They still were complaining about what they didn't have. So what that did is that kind of angered God. And then he, he just, God kind of was saying, wow, the nerve of you, all the things I've done for you, you're still complaining. And uh, they ended up suffering. God ended up letting them suffer for a long time and let them see that they were actually blessed. Because one way or the other, God is going to get his word through. Uh, so now we'll go to Psalm 100, and we'll see what they said a little later. Actually, through the psalm is David, after they went through a little while. Um, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord God is good. In fact, he is the one who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You see, they came back later and they understood that they were blessed and they began to thank God for everything, you see, because you might not have a big house or a new car or a high-paying job, but if you have a house, there's a person without a house that can say you have a lot to be thankful for. No, you may not have a car, but if you have a car and it's not the kind of car you want, but there's somebody who's walking today who would love to have that car that you just don't want. 
See, we have to get in the perspective of the attitude with gratitude. My pastor's preaching on that right now, and I think that's a beautiful phrase. And especially, it goes right along with this season of Thanksgiving. Um, attitude of gratitude. We should always have the attitude of graciousness because God gives us grace, and we know that he gives us grace, and he's blessing us day by day. And to all of you that have eaten turkey and you're celebrating with family, just look around and stop and just thank God because a lot of people don't have those things that you're experiencing today. I pray that you heard a word from heaven. I pray that you heard from God because he dealt with me on this issue. Actually, it's Thanksgiving. I didn't know I was going to be making a video, but God has pressed upon me to make this video today. But I'm glad I did. And once again, I would like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And once again, let's just be careful not to complain too much. Yeah, it's kind of bad right now, but it could be a lot worse. And I want to close today with prayer, thanking you, God. And if you'll pray with me, bow your heads, please. Father God, we come to you on this Thanksgiving day just giving you thanks, Lord. We come to you giving you honor and praise, Lord. We say hallelujah to your name, the highest praise that we could ever say to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us in the past, the future, and the present, Lord. Lord, we thank you for just being with us, Lord. We thank you for instilling in us your word and giving us your mercy and grace every day, Lord. Lord, we ask that you continue to mold and shape us and guide us in the way that you should have us to go, Lord. Lord, we don't ever want to exclude you from any day. Lord, we should thank you every day. But today is a special day of Thanksgiving, and it's only fair that we thank you, the God of all, the creator of everything, the Savior of the world. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. It is in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Once again, thanks to God. I hope you have a beautiful Thanksgiving. I pray that you'll be blessed, and please come back again. I'm Apostle. I love you, and happy Thanksgiving.